All right, so this is 2009 AP Stats free response question number three. Go ahead and pause the video and read the question if you need to. But for those of us that have already read it, we're going to move on to part A here, and I'll just we'll just talk about it. Describe a method for assigning the 24 students to two groups of equal size. So you have to use a random number table, or you have to use random numbers from your calculator or a computer program. You have to reference that. So here's what I came up with, and I purposefully came up with something a little bit different than the answer key, just so you can see that there are multiple answers. So 3A, first, the num first number the students from 0, 1 to 24. All right, we have 24 students. Uh, then select two digit numbers from a random number table or a computer, cal computer or calculator. If the digit is between uh, 25 and 99, ooh, you know what I forgot right here? Y'all know what I forgot. Or it's zero, zero. Uh, then you ignore it, right? Because we only need the numbers from zero, one to 24. Otherwise, the first 12 students to get selected will dissect the frogs physically. If the numbers repeat when you're selecting them, ignore them. The remaining 12 students will dissect the frog using the computer software. So this totally, completely, randomly, there's a lot of leaves there, um, separates the students into two groups with no bias based off of a random number table. All right, part B. Suppose the teacher allowed the students to self-select. How might that self-selection process jeopardize a statistically valid comparison in the test scores? And we're talking specifically about post-test and uh, minus the pretest. So for part 3b, uh, allowing students to self-select. So you have to come up with a plausible situation here that, you know, really could upend your, you know, disrail your statistical comparison to between the two groups. Because remember, you want there to be no bias whatsoever. So here's what I came up with. If students who are naturally curious and excited about dissections may be more likely to select the physical dissections. As a result, these students may be more engaged in the learning process. That group of excited students would naturally outperform the other students based on their level of engagement and not on the nature of the dissection. So it's just because you get the kids that are all really super excited, they choose the physical uh, dissections. Their post uh, pre-test differences would be higher because they'd learn more. It may be possible that there's no difference in the effectiveness of the two methods, but the self-selection would cause uh, the physical dissection to appear to be more effective if the differences in scores were greater. All right, so that's what I came up with. The next thing I want to do is look at the scoring rubric. So here's what the solution guide says uh, are the correct answers. So for part A, each student will be assigned a unique random number uh, using a random number generator on a calculator, and then they put the numbers in order, and the, f the lowest 12 will be in one group, and the highest 12 will be in another group. So right now I want to look at what essentially correct means for that question. Essentially correct, you get a score of E, which is the highest score you can get. If a proper method randomization is described, it creates two groups of equal size and assigns the named treatment. So you have to say the physical and the computer. You have to use those named treatments, okay? Uh, it's partially if only one of the two criteria are met, and you can pause this and read it if you want to. Um, so if you top, flip a coin, then you can't guarantee there's gonna be equal sizes, okay? The student must work in two digit numbers, for example. So if you use a random number table, you have to work in two digit numbers. That's kind of what I did there. All right, so that is part A. Let's go back and look at part B. So part B is scored as follows. Essentially correct if the examples give a reasonable characteristic of the self-selected students in the study. I believe the example I gave is reasonable. Um, and number two explains how the characteristic could be associated with changes in the differences. So you really have to talk about, because that's what they're measuring, they're measuring the differences in scores. So you have to talk about how those differences would change. And if you don't have a strong explanation, they're gonna give you a partially credit on that one. Let's see if I did it. Uh, changes in the differences in their scores. Okay, so right here specifically, they're their post pretest differences would be higher. That specifically talks about the changes in the differences. All right, there's my 2009 number three for your response question explanation.